Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the Soviet Tech Tree Heavy Tank at Tier 9, the T-10. Now this tank used to lead to the IS-7 back in the day, and it used to be called the IS-8 way, 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 way back as well. But then they added the 257, made it go to the IS-7, and then they added the object 277, there's a lot of numbers in this, and when they added the 277, they made it so that you could get to that tank from the T-10. Although you could also get to it from the 257, which never made sense to me. But, yeah, you can basically get to the 277 from the T-10. And, yeah, they're basically more similar in playstyle, the 277 and the T-10. The 277 is definitely just a T-10 version of this tank. And what's this tank like? Well, the T-10 is it's a pretty solid tank, really. It's a definite heavium. In the fact that its armor can be okay, it can bounce a decent amount, it's very good at side scraping, but its upper plate and lower plate do struggle against most of the guns you're going to face, because most of them will just pen you. The turret armor is very, very nice. The gun handling is okay for a Soviet 122mm. You've got 258 penetration on the standard AP, 340 on the heat rounds, which is absolutely beautiful, and you've got a damn nice rate of fire on this tank. Because the base rate of fire is 11.4. But as you're seeing in front of you, the reload is actually really nice for 440 Alpha. You've got it down to, with a food boost, 7.6 seconds, which is insane. It's like 8.5 without that food boost. And it means you can put out the damage so, so quickly in this tank. One of the limitations, naturally, for the tank, though, is a very Soviet problem, and that is that it does have five degrees of gun depression, which can hold you back on ridgelines and stuff like that. Now, obviously, being Soviet, this 122mm gun, it, is, it does have 0.36 accuracy with 2.7 second aim time, and 0.36 isn't bad. 0.36 is on starting to get onto the derpier end of the accuracy but being soviet that's actually really not bad at all because a lot of these 122s have like 0.4 plus so it's a pretty nice accuracy but it can still occasionally decide you know what nah i'm just gonna miss that shot because rng and soviet guns but then it'll also hit the really stupid shots as well and yeah it's just the way it is with rng but you can definitely have a lot of fun with this tank You've just got to be careful, not be too aggressive with it, and use the fantastic 50 kilometers an hour top speed that this thing has to flank and spank aggressively with it, and get yourselves into good flanking positions. This kind of fight that we're in at the minute against, say, these 277s and other tanks where you sort of head on brawling is not always the best thing to do with this tank because it can lead to your death pretty quickly, unless they just keep bouncing. I mean, okay, we'll take the RNG, we'll take it. So what do I run in terms of the old crew on the T-10? Well, on the T-10, I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Trap Mechanic, Clutch Braking, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun. The three gun perks, because you do want to make the gun as good as humanly possible. The Clutch Braking to make the Track Traverse better, so it feels a little bit more nimble with its Track Traverse, because it does have 32 degrees a second on the Track Traverse, which... It's pretty quick for a heavy tank, but I do just want to make it a little bit faster, and you can make that up to like 35 degrees a second, which is good. And if you were to decide, oh, you know what, I'm not going to run a gun stabilizer or something like that, you could run the traction system, you get up to 55 kilometers an hour, which you would hit, and you'd have about 38 degrees a second track traverse, which would make you feel exceptionally nimble. But you got to watch out for your torque traverse in that regard, though, because your torque traverse is just a little bit slower. And then, yeah, in terms of equipment, I run the advanced loader, the gun stabilizer, and optics. Optics to be able to spot for myself, because you do have 400 meters view range, which if you run situational awareness, coated optics, that sort of thing, you will get a very, very good view range, and you'll be able to get a lot of assistance on quite a few of the maps. And you'll be able to also stop yourself from getting out of spotted too much, too. The advanced loader, naturally, because you want to make this DPM fantastic, because you've got an eight-second reload, it's beautiful and you want to make that better and gun stabilizer like i say because this gun isn't on the more accurate side it's definitely on the more derpy side so you want to try and make it as good as possible i mean realistically if you wanted to you could also just drop the stabilizer and run the traction system to go faster or run vents to make everything else about the tank better but I just I feel like because the way the gun can be, you definitely want to run the gun stabilizer. It's down to you though. It's down to how you feel comfortable with the tank. This is just sort of a template way of setting it up to get you started, and then you set it up to how you feel the most comfortable in the vehicle. 
So in this first game on Moravanka, we've managed to get 4.5k damage with 2 kills, 799 assists. We get a nice shot on the move into the T92. Just hopefully going to reload to get the kill on him, but can't quite get it. Looking for the shot onto the equaliser. We fire. And that shot went somewhere. No idea. The muzzle flash on this tank is huge. That is one thing. So when you do fire half the time, especially at range, you have absolutely no idea where your shell went. So unfortunately, we couldn't see where that shell went on the equaliser. But we finished the game with two kills, 4.9k damage, 148 assistance, the ace tanker. And 1,821 base XP. A really nice game for the T10 in a tier 10 match there. A T10 in a tier 10 match. That's, that's, a, that's, a, mouth, that's a mouthful. And yeah, we had a pretty damn nice game. And we're on to the second replay. And again, we're going to have a really nice game yet again. And we're on this map, which is Fjords. And on Fjords, I was thinking, right, where do I want to go in the T10? Do I want to go up north into the little corner up there at B8 and fight there? I don't really want to in the T10 because 5 degrees of gun depression is, is, is pretty limiting. And on that ridge line, I'm not going to do all that well, particularly. So what I'm going to do instead is go to the position at about E4-5. And I can try and get shots at people that cross along the F line and down the 5 line. It might work. It might not. But if I don't get a chance to get shots at them, I can also brawl on the corner at D6 and use the little corners to side scrape, stuff like that, and try and control the engagement. We end up seeing a CS63 get spotted. This RU251 making a YOLO play. And it's like, well, okay, Mr. RU251, I'm going to attack over this way and start trying to pummel in the shots. We end up spotting a Brask as well in a very aggressive position. He clearly just has not realized that I'm here. It's like... Hello, Mr. Barask. Get lost, my friend. And we get rid of him. But now we're on the corner. We're going to start the side scraping out. So it makes it as hard as possible for this MX-30 to pen us. We end up shooting him in the drive wheel, but unfortunately we shot him on the far end. So there was no tank behind it to kill. Or pen, sorry. And we ended up not penning it. The 4,005 fires, which is what we were waiting for. And we pop round to make sure that we get some damage into that guy. Because that 4,005, we do not want to have those hit points. We shoot the side of the MX-30 this time, and unfortunately that didn't track it. I thought that would have tracked it, but it only penned it. And we're just going to drive around and see if we can keep putting the shots in. You can see the artillery is currently trying to get AP rounds at us, which is going to hurt if it hits us. The 4005 drives around, fires, gets tracked. We have to keep this guy pinned. We have to get rid of him. There we go. Big 183mm gun out the game. Glorious times. It's always what you've got to do. If they fire, make the most of it. Don't just think, oh, it's fired and take that as an opportunity to pull back. Make sure you get as much damage into those things as possible and get rid of them because they are detrimental to everything that goes off in this game. So... We've now pushed into the CS63 because we can side scrape off of the dead wreck of the 4005. Artillery gets a shot into us, but we do manage to get a shot into the back of the MX-30. He only tracks us because, like I say, this thing is pretty good at side scraping. As long as you're not exposing too much of your upper plate, you'll be okay. And you can see we are starting to ricochet shots off of our side. The CS63 is tracked in place. I have no idea why he comes back out. Maybe he thought he'd have the DPM to get us. And... He ends up getting shot down by the SU-130PM. Now we've got shots into the KV-4. And at this position here, I'm kind of safe from artillery. Not quite, but I am, if you know what I mean. So artillery can still try and hit us. And they could splash us by hitting the dead wreck of the 4005. But I'm pretty confident that they're not going to actually manage to hit me with that AP round that it keeps trying to launch at me. And thankfully so far, it's not happened. We managed to shut down the KV-4 there. We're up to 4.6k damage, 617 assistance. And I want to try and get into a position where I can shoot these guys, these heavy tanks in the ass. But I do notice that the guys are attacking up north. And my driving is fantastic. Don't question it. We try and get a shot into the Progetto 65. But unfortunately, we bounce on the Progetto 65. And now it's like, oh no... Thankfully, we managed to kill him before he shuts us down. We've got a light tank now behind us. It's like, sir, did you think this through? Good night, Mr. RU. We get rid of the RU. We're up to 5.2k damage with four kills. And I was starting to back up behind the RU because I was expecting either one of the tanks that was coming down from the north to get me or the Turan to just pop over and shut me down. But actually, they've just completely ignored me and run off towards our cap. The GUI shuts down the SU-130 PM. The, the Emil 1951 is trying to shut down our GUI, so while he's distracted with that, we pop a shot straight through his back of his turret. 
We're up to 5.5k damage, just looking to keep pummeling the shots in if we can. If we could get a shot into the Turan, that would be fantastic, because if that guy disappears, it's game over. But the Emil 1951 drives into a perfect position for us to shut him down, and we get rid of him. We're up to 5 kills with 5.7k damage so far. And I think, do I want to go for that Turan? No, I'm probably going to die if I go for that Turan, because he will outspot me by a country mile, and he will also just... Yeah, he'll just kill me, generally. So, we decide, okay, screw it. If the, if the Turan decides to cap, we'll go back and reset the cap. But you know what? We know where the artillery are. We know where the AVR is that's been camping in that corner. So, let's go and try and attack these guys instead. Because we've got more chance of limiting the engagement. More chance of just getting more damage off and trying to get our top gun, really. I'd say, if we attack the Turan, we're just, we're just dead. So, the AVR is currently spotted. We're just trying to, again, be very careful when going round. Because I don't want to get shut down at this point. He... Gives us the side of his turret, so we slap the heat round through the side of his turret, because that's about all we've got left. Just wait on the reload. He's ignoring us, and unfortunately, the T100LT ends up getting the shot into him. But we get a nice shot into the GUI there. Hopefully get a reload in. Oh, the 4005 blew it up. Oh, unfortunately, we couldn't quite secure a top gun. Now there's only one tank left. It is that Turan from earlier on. And unfortunately, this game went from... Oh, we could win this quite easily. We're quite far in front to the Turans murdered everything on the other side and there's only three of us left. And in fact, he's just shut down the 4005. Yeah, this is this is not looking good. So, you know what? Because the last time we saw the Turan, he was on four, well, 13, nearly 1400 hit points. He's just going to kill us both. We don't have the DPM to kill him from full health. Either me or the RU. Me and the RU are both one shots for the, the Turan. So what's the point in risking it? Because the Turan will literally kill me, and he'll reload in time to kill the RU. Well, the RU is a two-shot, really, for him. But if he fights HE, actually, he could kill him in one shot. But the, to be honest, the, the RU just doesn't have the DPM to kill the Turan. The Turan would still end up wrecking it. So we're not chancing it. There's no point in that. And we're just going to cap it out, because we want the win. We're up five kills, six and a half k well, 6.6k damage. We've had a pretty damn nice game, and I don't want to end it on a sour note by just getting shut down by a stupid tank. And we finished the game with a really nice total for the T10. Finished with the victory, 5 kills, 6.6k damage, 1100 assistance, 1800 blocks, the ace tank of the high caliber, the steel wall, 2.2k base XP. A really great game for the T10 in a tier 10 game there. And yeah, it's an absolutely solid tank. It's a great tank to grind through, and at least with the 277, which isn't that bad of a tank really. And it's a proper old school tank. So as always everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!